Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of The Garden Girl. And I told you this week I would be in a much better mood and it wasn't gonna be the Debbie Downer. We have sun, the rain has left off a little bit anyhow, where we keep doing the no rain dance. So hopefully you guys have been able to get in, your plants are doing a little bit better. Um, today, I, this is why I was so excited. I have been dying to get up here all summer. Um, I'm going to introduce to you a very special person and this is where it's going to be a little fun for you beginners and advanced today. Um, this is Tammy. Hello. <laughs> and Tammy has Hellwig's Nursery and Farm. Um, Tammy, I am curious, okay, to start off, um, Tammy, what, what do you do out here? Well, I do a whole bunch of, a lot of different things. Um, Right now we're into daylily season, so that's where my concentration will be. Um, I have 400 varieties of daylilies, and for many of you, you only think that there's orange and yellow daylilies, and that's just not so. We're gonna show you some that are outstanding, beautiful daylilies that'll add perennial colors to your gardens. And I am, um, I'm gonna learn a lot too, as you heard her say, 400. <laughs> okay, so it's way beyond Stella Stelladoras and the what we call the roadside lilies. Um, now, wh how long have you been here? How long have you been doing this? I've been doing this since 2004. So, nine, 10 years, 11 years. I don't keep track. <laughs> okay, okay. And what, like, what, how did you, when did this, when did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? And how did you say, that's it, we're, we're going to do this, and this is how we're going to do it? Well, it's kind of a long story, but to make it short and simple, I started propagating woodies. Then I started playing with perennial seeds. And I ended up getting too many plants for what I personally could use and what my friends even wanted. That happens. <laughs> and my husband says, what are you going to do with all this? You can't just be a collector. And Lord and behold, I loaded up my car, went to a flea market, came home with $400 and thought, oh, this is neat. I like doing this and I'm getting a little cash. <laughs> so that's kind of how it evolved. It came from a hobby, went into a hobby that I was making money at. And now it's gone into a small business. My children, which are adults, are slowly getting involved. They have to work their way into an income with the plants to give up, you know, their full-time jobs because they have obligations. And so we are putting up a big greenhouse. We're going to go into perennial plug um, wholesaling. And then, you know, some of the leftovers I'm going to pot up and people can come up here and get them for a really good price. The kicker is I am not a retail location. So you have to call me for an appointment or drive up and see if I'm home. That's just how it is and that's how it's going to be. I'm not going to be open retail. It, I can ship plants all over the United States. I am Ohio State licensed. Um, so a lot of people just give me a call or Facebook me and they come on up. Sometimes I have signs on 212 and they'll come up. You know, they get to know who I am and that's how I like it. I don't want to be, I've been in business before and that's just at this time in my life isn't what I want. I like, I love growing the plants. I love doing divisions. I love doing hybriding. I'm not real specific just on one plant. It's different seasons that I will be concentrating my efforts on. See, so things can branch out. And this is obviously, you know, you're finding out a little bit, which was going to be my next question, the future of the business, which perennial plugs, some different things. I um, mean, it slowly branches out. I, I don't blame you for keeping it small. Um, I think a lot of us wouldn't, I, I'm kind of the same thing. I, I don't think I would want anything huge and be stuck. Um, and I know the daylilies are your main thing. Um, what we are going to do is go into you know, the different types of daylilies. There are different types of daylilies. Uh, we are going to go into what, what you need to be looking for. Whether you're coming out here and you end up saying, that's it, I'm Facebooking Tammy, I'm gonna come out there and get me some. It, you know, that's fine too. Um, but we're gonna go over how you're gonna select them properly and how you are going to care for them. 
we're going to go into what where you should be putting them, where you need to grow them, and what the advantages are, and the different bloom seasons, because daylilies do bloom at different times of the summer, correct? I, yes. I have clients that come up weekly because it changes out here daily from June 20th all the way up until September. Now, I don't have good blooms in September as far as looking like this. You know, it'll be sporadic plants, but people that come in, they want that plant to prolong their um, growing season and having color. Because they'll only, they'll only bloom for several weeks, and then, but if you have a nice selection that's blooming, you'll always have plants that are in bloom. And there's nothing like a daylily, the daylily colors. Um, they, I think they beat print, uh, our annual colors, actually, and they're easy. And this is why we're here today. Uh, when we come back, we're going to start getting into, like I said, the different types, where we're going to put them. Um, you may want, I usually tell you guys, always have a pen and paper or, you know, pencil and paper handy, because uh, you may want to jot some stuff down. So stay tuned, go grab something to drink, get that paper and pencil, and we will definitely be right back. Sound of silence and cars were cutting like knives in a fist fight. And I found you with a tear in your eye, your head in the curtains, and heart like the Fourth of July. You swore and said, We are not, we are not shining stars. This I know, I never said we are. If you lost and alone, or you see. Like a stone, carry on. May your past be the sound of your fear on the ground. Carry on, carry on, carry on. We are, we are shining stars. Carry on, we are invincible. We are who we are. Today's Senior Magazine is a new monthly publication in our area is designed specifically for seniors and provides important information about health, travel, pets, senior living, aging, retirement, fitness, gardening, and so much more. Today's Senior Magazine can be found throughout Stark County in different business locations. Make sure you pick up your free copy of today's Senior Magazine. And if you're in business needing to reach the senior markets, please contact your local advertising consultant at 330-371-0356. Well, welcome back. The sun is still out. I am excited about that. I'm in shorts. Yeah, There's no I'm rain. <laughs> Flip flops. Okay, so we're still here. If you're jumping in right now, we're up at Hellwig's Nursery with Tammy. And we are going to go into the types of daylilies. Um, okay, so first off, we'll try to do this as an instructional way. Tammy, what are the different types of daylilies? Well, that's a hard question. There is over 40,000 named daylilies, but they are into two groups. There is dips and there are tets. And the, the only difference is they have different chromosome levels. So if you get into high breeding, it is important to know. If you are not high breeding and you like the flower, you get the flower because they're both strong growers. Typically the dips are going to have thinner um, leaves, such as the Stella. So there's, they'll multiply a little bit fast, faster, but they're real thin, like grass. The tets usually are big, bulky plants, um, and they're really heavy performers, and people love them. So it's a personal preference. It's not that one is be better than the other. It is more of a personal preference. Where it becomes uh, an issue is where people are hybriding then they need to know, is this a tet or is this a dip? Because they will not cross because they have different chromosome levels. 
Okay. And would you say that the tets are fancier? I think you can get um, bigger flowers. Um, like the, showier? Showier or thicker substance. Um, they're typically the ones of the great big daylilies with the ruffled edges and brilliant colors. The dips are typically uh, more shaped in a ditch lily okay. shape. A, okay. What the traditional um, daylily shape is. Now that's not always true, but that's typically where it's at. Now, as far as and, and this is you know slang term, we don't need to go into the five syllables, but your dips, what are some of the varieties of dips that when people either come out here or they're wherever, at Lowe's, Walmart, I don't know, at a garden center, you know, where what are some of the names that they're gonna see? Because if, if people are like, oh, okay, now what's a dip? What are some of the, maybe the variety names or the more common ones that they're gonna see out there that are good choices for our area around here. You know, of course, you know, if you're going to Lowe's and picking up Daylily, Stella Diora is a good strong dip. Every landscaper uses it, every landscaper has it. There's a reason for that. It adds nice color. It is a good bloomer, it's short. It's a lot of things that a lot of people want in a carefree plant. Um, Happy Returns is also, you know, they have several colors in their series and it's readily available you know, at the local garden centers. Um, where my market is, is is I have plants that you're not gonna find at Lowe's and you're not gonna find at Hillcrest or Goodings unless they buy them from me. Right, <laughs> right. again, this she's a specialty, this is her specialty. Yeah. So, you know, growers and, and frankly, you know, growers only have so much room to grow everything, just like yourself. Mm -hmm. um, just like a lot of the growers around Ohio, you, you'd like to do a million of everything and make it available to the garden centers, but my gosh, everybody's restricted. You only have so much room, so much room and so much help. Um, going into the, the tets, what are some of the varieties that people might see at the garden centers and at the box stores? And what are some of your favorites out of that? Well, m mine, I, my favorites really do change daily, so I, I, it's hard to answer that, but I mean, some of the old ones that you might find at Lowe's, it's hit or miss, and you know, I really think that most of the stuff that are coming into the box stores is surpluses from high breeders' gardens okay. or from the, the industry. Um, some of the, my favorite is Mary's Gold, and it's an older um, tet. This flower gets this big. Um, I would like that. Just a brilliant, brilliant gold, and it almost glows at dusk time. Um, clarification um, is another one of my favorites. Um, Richard Norris has hybrid that, and um, he's down in Athens, Ohio, so he's a local hybrider. Um, and if you're ever down in Athens, he's really a great person to go visit. Um, he's got acres and acres of daylilies, but he's got his own line also. Um, you what know, color is clarification? Car clarification is um, like a lavender with very, very, very dark um, purple, purple eye. Okay. And I had it blooming yesterday. It's all in buds. I don't see a bloom today, of course, but okay it'll be blooming tomorrow <laughs> i know a, a, a lot of people think that daylilies are only yellow gold mm. orange yellow gold orange and you mentioned a lavender one um i know you know is there some really nice reds and some purples of the showier tets that people can look for absolutely um College Colors is a really outstanding, outstanding um, purple. We have um, Blackjack Cherry. That, that can, I've seen that at Lowe's also. Um, that's an outstanding purple. You know what? They range from lemon yellow. You, you go all through the ranges of your yellows. They go into pinks. So they go into bicolor. So you can have a yellow daylily with a red center or a purple center. Um, you, we have coral colored ones, we have rusty orange ones, we have brilliant 
orange ones, pinks, all shades of pinks. Um, we have some near white ones on the market. What the hybriders are really going for in colors at this point in the, the game is pure white daylilies and um, blue daylilies. They Ooh, have not gotten blue. They are bringing some blue pigments into some of the plants. Now they're very expensive at this point in time. The, sure. If you have blue pigmentation into a daylily, and that's really for other high breeders, they're keeping the cost up. Um, maybe somebody else can pull it out a little bit further. You know, this sure. is a long, when you're high breeding, you could have 10 years before you got this plant to the market. That was gonna be my next question is, you know, she's talking about high breeding, and I know some of you are probably like, I don't get it. This is where you see your new varieties of petunias. Um, you know, with annual, this takes a lot of work and it's not something that happens overnight or even in a year. You, you know, for one, I think you'll probably agree on this, but once you hybridize something or breed it, you know, it's kind of like a baby. It takes a while to cook. You got to grow it. It has to bloom and you have to see what you're getting color wise and size wise and is it is it doing what you want it to do do you have to further i don't want to use the word mutate because this is not gmo no. so this is way different this is not crossing a sheep with oatmeal okay this is this is <laughs> this is crossing a, a one kind of sheep with another kind of sheep so this has nothing to do with gmo hybridizing is perfectly perfectly natural it's trying to get different colors different like in the tomato world different um how do i want to say it yes disease disease resistance there's a lot so i i want to clarify that because i know that's something everybody asks about um now you were telling me about one and i'm thinking i may have to take it home and i know you said it wasn't <laughs> cheap but sometimes you just got to bite the bullet if it's something special can you explain what this really special one is Okay, we have uh, Pigment of Imagination, and I did get this from Richard Norris when I visited his farm a couple years ago. It is a dip, so it's got the thin foliage, and it multiplies fairly fast, um, but it is almost a silver color, um, and then it's got an eye on it, and it will... It comes out a little muddy in the morning, but it turns into brilliant turquoise through the afternoon. This plant, the color changes almost hourly, especially if the sun's out nicely, because they lilies really do love sun. But it's not quite into bloom yet, and I'd love to show it to you guys, but it's pigment of imagination. You can always look it up online. It's Richard Norris, but I do have it local if you're interested in it. Awesome. Okay, so when we come back, now that we've gotten through some different kinds and you're going to rush out here or go down to a store and decide that you're going to try this um, because these are perennials, they come back year after year, so it makes it easy. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go into what you need to look for in a daylily and how you should select them, where you're going to put them, and how you're going to care for them to get these gorgeous, gorgeous flowers that are all around us right now. So stay tuned. Keep that pen and paper ready. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college, and yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are gonna be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. WJER and TV2 would like to introduce you to a new website, WJERTV2.com, 
where you can watch exciting high school football, soccer, and volleyball replays from TV2 Sports on your home computer, smartphone, or tablet. Also watch the latest episodes of TV2's original programming, Sports Talk, The Garden Girl, The Not-So-Shy Chef, Off the Record, and Medical Minutes, as well as catch up on local community news and search for local businesses. So make sure to check out the new WJERTV2.com community website where everything's local. Hi everybody, welcome to the summer contest. I told you we were gonna have more contests. Now, I know last year we had the garden contest where everybody sent in pictures of their garden. This summer contest is gonna be a skosh different. What I want you guys to send me, because I will post them on my Facebook page, I want you to pick out your favorite plant. The favorite plant, I don't care if it's a perennial, an annual, a vegetable, an herb. What I want you to do is send me your favorite plant that you are most proud of that is doing good for you this year. And I want you to tell me why you like it. I don't care if it's as simple as, well, it doesn't die. I don't kill it. It doesn't matter, that's fine. Um, I'm holding two of the products here that are for giveaway, but I couldn't hold the whole bundle. And again, DRAM has been so kind as to provide these prizes for you guys. So here's the deal. This is a brand new apron. I know, don't even sit there, you 25 year olds that are guarding saying, I would never wear that. Oh yeah, give it a chance, because even Tammy thought this was pretty nifty. Um, this actually, you can deadhead, you can prune, it, you will not leave your tools lay 20 feet away, and it has a drop down. So you can stuff everything like a little kangaroo pouch, and then it rips right down Velcro-wise, and boom, it's empty. These things are nifty, and they are by DRAM. And the other fun thing I have in my hand is, you guys know this is my favorite, somebody's gonna get one of these, along with some really neat products, because, hey, it's July, we should be ready to go for some watering, um, and there's a lot more prizes that have to do with the watering, and even some fun stuff for your kids if you have kids. So, we've got a really nice prize package. So pick your favorite flower out, get it to me in the month of July, and in August, the first two weeks in August, guess what? You can share it, I don't care what you do, but whoever has the most likes, just like last year's contest, is gonna be our winner. And we will pull that mid-August. And we'll have our winner come in and it's gonna be so much fun. So, you got it? And if you can't get it on the Facebook page, again, you can email it to me at heather at wjrtv2.com. Welcome back everybody. Okay, so now comes the question. So you're either coming out here or you're going to Hillcrest or a garden center or Lowe's, whatever, and you're gonna go down and you decide you're gonna jump into this. The first thing is they need to have the proper site for it before they even go and waste their money. So I'm gonna let you follow up with, where is the perfect site and soil, what type of soil? how much sun and where should they put it? Okay, sun is really, really important to daylilies. Um, you know, they can have maybe four hours of afternoon sun and that's gonna make them happy, especially when it gets really, really hot. But um, if you give them, you plant them under a tree because they look nice with your hostas, they won't, they'll sporadically bloom, but they won't bloom well for you. Your foliage will multiply but you won't get a lot of blooms um, they are a sun lover you can put them out in the f you can put them out where they're baking all day long in the sun they'll love it like here yeah, like I'll I mean no you look shape. behind us there there is it, and, and you're gonna see these guys are right out in the wide open and they are loving life yeah they're baking in the sun they love that now, if you have an area, if you're, if you're putting them around your landscape and you have four or five hours of shade, you're okay. As long as that is not the end, and I'm not real good with this northeast thing, I'm going to be real honest, <laughs> of your home. Right. Um, is, you know, as long as these guys are getting like six to ten hours of sun, they're okay. And, and they're not going to die if um, they're not getting the proper sun. They just won't bloom for you. 
you can dig them up and move them. That's the beauty of them. You know, they're really foolproof. They're really, really an easy plant. Dig the hole, loosen up the dirt. I have pure clay up here. I mix a little mulch in just to give it a little. Organics, if you have a nice compost pile. They love organics. Um, they're not heavy, heavy feeders. Um, you know, you can fertilize them with 12, 12, 12. It's cheap. You can put bone meal in the, the hole. They love it. Um, mine haven't been fertilized. And I'm going to be real honest for probably four years. And they multiply like crazy. You know, I, I don't do a lot of chemicals. I do a little bit of spraying here and there just because I have so many. And it's kind of a commercial garden. Um, if I hit them with Roundup, it really doesn't hurt them. I'd love to be able to hand weed all these. But that's just not the reality of it. I tried it for four or five years and it wasn't successful. That's going to break your back and your knees and yeah, like you're going to lose your down. marbles. Yeah, and it does. It gets to be a lot. But that's good to know because a lot like of people gross. still use, you know, Roundup. And, and some it, people are just going to be very angry that I just said that word. I, I, a lot of things are on the fence with chemicals, with the pollinators. I know me and you talked about it on the phone. Um, we I'm try and try as might. Right, exactly. Um, so now as far as when they plant them, do they plant them deep? Do they plant them flush? Okay, you dig your hole bigger than what your root system is or your pot. You're going to probably do twice the size um, when you take it out of your pot or you're coming home from my place. My, my, with me, I'm fresh digging the day lily. So you've got roots that are they're spread out um, but if you have a pot, pot bound one they're swirling your pot you want to get in there and pull them roots out and kind of spread them out what I suggest is you dig your hole I'm gonna say twice as big a little bit deeper take some of your excess soil make like a little mound in the middle of your hole and then daylilies have a crown system Get that crowned and the roots sitting on top of this, this mound. And you'll see what I mean when you're working with them. Then the roots will flow over and then you backfill. You can put your, your um, fertilizer in at this time. Um, bone meal, they absolutely love bone meal. It's cheap, it's easy, it's available everywhere. It is a good food for them. It is, I know we have it at Hillcrest. It's under $10 it's and it'll last you a while. It, a bag lasts me. All season, really. It helps keep the deer away, too. Yep, <laughs> they don't like bone meal. They don't like the smell of the blood in it. <laughs> so that's another advantage. But the daylilies absolutely love it. You know, put a handful in. You're not going to kill the daylily. Um, you know, backfill it. Stop, tamp it down. Tamp it down really nice. Uh, water it in. And, it, you know, if we have weather like we've had here in June, you don't have to ever water Again, it's going to get established. Um, you know, if we start to get hot and dry, water water it every two or three days. Uh, typically in transplanting, um, you are going to get yellowed leaves. Don't worry. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Um, cut them off. Uh, when I um, transplant here and I line out, which you're not going to do, but I line every fan out, um, I cut the whole thing off, bloom and all, because it's better for the plant. Puts more growth back to vegetative yeah. state, yes, and that's what you want. So a lot of times I know people are like, I can't believe you're cutting off all your blooms right now. And I said, well, even with the petunias and stuff, it's it's better for me to take everything off. They're going to get the crap kicked out of them anyhow with all this rain we've been having. So I'd rather let the let it flush black back out petal-wise, um, vegetatively, and... <laughs> Now that it's actually clearing up, everything will come full circle and they'll bloom, but at least yeah. they won't be ratty. Yeah. And so a lot of times I know friends and stuff will come over to my house and they can't believe how much I hack at stuff. Yeah. Um, but it really, it really does help in the long run. I absolutely agree with you. It's just always nice because like I tell everybody on this show, do what you want. This is just how I do it. Go ahead. If, it, if you have a different method that works for you, stay with it. Um, but I always give them the options of how we do things differently. Um, that way it expands their horizons or maybe yeah. they'll try it. Um, I know that uh, with it being summer, um, now that you know what to pick, what to look for, where to put them, and we are in the dead of summer. Uh, this is July now. 
So I think it's a perfect time to pop off the summer contest and stuff. So don't forget, keep your eyes open on our summer contest because you're going to want to get me those pictures as soon as possible. And uh, keep your eye out on the Garden Girl site. Um, don't forget also that this is a good time of year if we're going to start having the drought. Get out those rain wands. I'm sure Sunny's going to be using hers um, since she won the contest. She got a bunch of Dram, a really nice array of Dram products um, that they sponsored. And don't forget the Grow It app is still there, that brand new app. We want to know what's growing for you. So you want to make sure that you uh, put your flowers on there and rate them. Like it, leave it, or love it. And it's a, it's a really neat app. It's for annuals, perennials, vegetables. I, I, you know, they're building and building. There's more and more. Um, so make sure you're staying on there and staying active so you can see what's going good in our area. Um, and next week, we are going to be right here again with Tammy. And we're going to go into all the other different crops that she is growing because it's not just daylilies. Um, I just wanted to since she is the person in the county to me that's really doing neat things with daylilies and since they are such an easy plant i wanted her to uh, reassure you with that and so that you can expand your horizons because this is the second season now of the garden girl and i want things to get more advanced i want you guys to learn about this so when we come back next week we're going to be right here again and you guys are going to learn about a lot of other crops and a lot of good perennials maybe not so good perennials but this is a way that you can branch off and have something where you're not breaking your back every spring trying to put stuff in the ground and fight with annuals um, and some different things. So enjoy this beautiful weather that we're having. Everybody out there, please keep doing the no rain dance um, or the less rain dance anyhow. Some rain's good, but not a lot, not like we've been having. So let's stay on track, enjoy your summer. Don't forget, you guys can email me questions. I know you guys stop me at the grocery stores and the mall and wherever you run into me at. Um, but don't forget, you can get a hold of me at uh, heather at wjrtv2.com. And all my episodes, my previous ones are on there if you need to look for them. And then also my Facebook page, the Garden Girl page. So do not be afraid to email me pictures if you're having a problem with something. Um, I will get an answer. If I don't have it right off the top of my head, I have enough good people that will get me that answer. So enjoy your week. I'll see you guys next week.